STS-51L was the 25th mission of the United States Space Shuttle Program, the program to carry out routine transportation for Earth-to-orbit crew and cargo, as well as the final flight of Space Shuttle Challenger. Planned as the first teacher in space project in addition to observing Halley's Comet for six days, the mission never flew past orbit, a structural failure during its ascent phase 73 seconds after launch from Kennedy Space Center Launch Complex 39 on January 28, 1986, killed all seven crew members. Commander Dick Scobie, Pilot Michael J. Smith, Mission Specialists Ellison S. Onizuka, Judith A. Resnick and Ronald E. McNair, and Payload Specialists Gregory Jarvis and Krista McAuliffe—and destroyed the orbiter. Immediately after the disaster, NASA convened the Rogers Commission to determine the cause of the explosion. The failure of an O-ring seal on the starboard solid rocket booster SRB was determined to have caused the shuttle to break up in flight. Space shuttle flights were suspended for 32 months while the hazards with the shuttle were addressed. The space shuttle program resumed with STS-26, launched two years after the accident. Topic. Planned mission. The tenth mission for Challenger, STS-51L was scheduled to deploy the second in a series of tracking and data relay satellites, carry out the first flight of the shuttle-pointed tool for astronomy Spartan 203, Halley's Comet experiment deployable in order to observe Halley's Comet, and carry out several lessons from space as part of the Teacher in Space Project and Shuttle Student Involvement Program SSIP. The flight marked the first American orbital mission to involve in-flight fatalities. It was also the first American human spaceflight mission to launch and fail to reach space. The first such mission in the world had been the Soviet Soyuz 18A mission, in which the two crew members had survived. Gregory Jarvis was originally scheduled to fly on the previous shuttle flight STS-61C, but he was reassigned to this flight and replaced by Congressman Bill Nelson. Topic: Crew. Topic: Backup crew. Topic. Crew seating arrangement Topic. Crew seating arrangement notes Although the crew died in the Challenger disaster, their seating assignment chart depicts what would have happened if the mission was performed as planned. Ascent disaster During the ascent phase, 73 seconds after liftoff, the vehicle experienced a catastrophic structural failure resulting in the loss of crew and vehicle. The Rogers Commission later determined the cause of the accident to have been the failure of the primary and secondary backup O-ring seals on Challenger's right solid rocket booster. The failure of these seals allowed a flamethrower-like flare to impinge upon one of two aft SRB attached struts, which eventually failed, freeing the booster to pivot about its remaining attachment points. The forward part of the booster cylinder struck the external tank inter-tank area, leading to a structural failure of the ET—the core structural component of the entire stack. A rapid burning of liberated propellants ensued. With the structural backbone of the stack compromised and breaking up, the SRBs flew off on their own, as did the orbiter, which rapidly disintegrated due to overwhelming aerodynamic forces. The launch had been approved despite a predicted ambient temperature of minus 3 degrees Celsius 27 degrees Fahrenheit, well below the qualification limit of major components such as the SRBs, which had been certified for use only at temperatures above 4 degrees Celsius 39 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Evidence found in the remnants of the crew cabin showed that several of the emergency air supplies PEAPs carried by the astronauts had been manually activated, suggesting that forces experienced inside the cabin during breakup of the orbiter were not inherently fatal, and that at least three crew members were alive and capable of conscious action for a period following vehicle breakup. Tracking reported that the vehicle had exploded and impacted the water in an area approximately located at 28.64 degrees north, 80.28 degrees west. <laughs> Crew fate Divers from the USS Preserver located what they believed to be the crew cabin on the ocean floor on March 7. A dive the following day confirmed that it was the cabin and that the remains of the crew were inside. No official investigation into the Challenger disaster has concluded for certain the cause of death of the astronauts. It is almost certain that the disintegration itself did not kill the entire crew as three of the four personal egress air packs PEAPs that were recovered had been manually activated. This would only be done during an emergency or loss of cabin pressure. PEAPs do not provide a pressurized air flow and would still have resulted in the astronauts losing consciousness within several seconds. There were media reports alleging that NASA had a tape recording of the crew panicking and onboard conversation following the disintegration during the 2 minute 45 second free fall before hitting the sea east of Florida. This was likely fabricated and no recording exists, as the crew may have been unconscious from loss of cabin pressure and the astronauts did not wear individual voice recorders. The impact of the shuttle with the sea would have killed any still surviving astronauts on board, though they may have died before the impact of other causes. <laughs> Mission objectives. Deployment of Tracking Data Relay Satellite B TDRSB with an inertial upper stage booster Flight of Shuttle Pointed Tool for Astronomy Spartan 203, Halley's Comet Experiment Deployable Fluid Dynamics Experiment FDE. Comet Halley Active Monitoring Program CHAMP. Phase Partitioning Experiment PPE. Three Shuttle Student Involvement Program SSIP experiments Two Lessons for the Teacher in Space Project TISP. Unofficial, Ronald McNair was planning to play the saxophone in space for Jean-Michel Jarre's album, Rendezvous, Track V. <laughs> Mission insignia Dick Scobie asked Kennedy Space Center engineer Ernie Reyes to design the mission patch seen above to represent the mission of 51L. In it, Challenger is depicted launching from Florida and soaring into space to carry out a variety of goals. Among the prescribed duties of the five astronauts and two payload specialists represented by the seven stars of the U.S. flag was observation and photography of Halley's Comet, backdropped against the U.S. flag in the insignia. Surnames of the crew members encircle the scene, with the payload specialists being recognized below. The surname of the first teacher in space, Krista McAuliffe, is followed by a symbolic apple. See also Apollo 1 STS-51L mission timeline Space Shuttle Columbia disaster Space Shuttle Program Challenger Center <laughs>